Coming to you by way of the not-for-profit mainframe art studios at 900 Keo Way in downtown Des Moines, this is 900 Views, a podcast about building community through the arts as we build an arts community. I'm your host, Pat Bodie, and today I'm at Smoky Row with artist and arts organizer, Cat Rocketship. According to Cat, they've run a whole bunch of projects like blogs, an indie craft fair, and a community-supported art program. Kat teaches portrait drawing and zine making workshops to grade schoolers, and Kat's also the digital organizer for Iowa Citizens for Community Improvement, an organization that works on issues of the environment, wealth and equality, and social justice, probably just to name a few would be, <laughs> yeah. would be fair to say. And that, uh, Kat, that indie program we just mentioned, that indie art fair, that's really market day, yes. right? Yep. What can you tell us about why you and your cohort got involved in developing a program like Market Day and give a quick description of it? Yeah, um, Market Day is Iowa's largest indie craft fair, so like small, independently owned businesses. We used to describe it as not your not your grandma's craft fair, but then we met some pretty cool grandmas, so we kind of left that along the way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Grandma to be. Right. <laughs> oh, congratulations. Um, we started it uh, 11 years ago, 12 years ago, in 2009. Um, and we really started it because we wanted to create a place where um, more small independent makers could meet people in the Des Moines area and um, let folks know, like kind of cross pollinate and also percolate the idea in Des Moines that there were people making um, not just cool things, not just useful things, not just making things with their hands, but also sort of percolate some of the like some of the radical ideas that the DIY crowd um, comes up with also or that it, it adheres to also. So we really wanted to create a place where makers could um, find an audience and also um, really nurture that audience's growth in Des Moines because 10, 12 years ago, um, it was a much different scene than it is now. <laughs> Tell me about that difference in the scene. What do you see as uh, the advancements that are being made in the art scene here? There are a lot more people involved is the first thing. A lot more people making things, a lot more artists of all stripes, um, visual artists, um, a larger community for designers and things like that, more musicians, um, more everything. And some of that comes from us being better connected, more interconnected than we were uh, way back then. Um, some of it comes from just practice, and we've kind of gone through some like micro generations of makers and creators. Um, some of it comes from we've got some long standing institutions like the Vaudeville Muse has been here for ages really as a place for up-and-coming musicians and artists also to uh, get a toehold and find an audience and things like that. Um, so all of those things have come together to create um, a more fertile bed for artists and creatives to to grow really to just use that metaphor all the way through um, it's like a garden like it takes time to plant those seeds and see them grow and take out the weeds and put in some more fertilizer and put in you know some of the long-term improvements that you want to see like that we have mainframe now as a place to really host artists and a place for artists to work and achieve studio space cheaply and also as a place for them to then um, keep cross-pollinating with each other is an incredible development in our creative scene you specifically started out with that uh, concept of interconnection yeah. of, of you as artists. Yeah. yeah. So tell me a little bit about the root sources of that improved interconnection. Is that something like Market Day? Is that social media? Ooh. Is that mainframe? What, what yeah. is that? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, for me, it was Market Day. And I think it's also... Um, the fact that we've had many different places for that to happen. So Market Day was just one. And it really grew out of... Um, a, an artist co-working space that I was involved in back in the day, um, and which we specifically created in the market building, um, which is now also still going space for artist studios and creative businesses and a tattoo studio and things like that. Um, but we really started it back then just so that we were sharing studio space, we were sharing tools, we were sharing ideas, and that's where Market Day grew. Um, and at the same time and since then other people have done other kind of similar projects with their own collectives to go like well we want to do 
this other art show. We want to do this other project. We want to do this other music festival. And um, when you have enough people creating those little cohorts coming together, then those cohorts get bigger and they get more fertile. And then they start, we start like playing with each other. And um, the, the real thing behind the success of an art scene is having lots of those little cohorts where small communities where people can be growing in their artistic practice, they can be growing their ideas, they can be um, trying out new projects, and then they can, when they need to, reach out to another little cohort to get some support, some power, some new ideas, things like that. So when you say you're an arts organizer, yeah. uh, I noticed that uh, on the blog you wrote for Market Day, it was, someone has to work with the fiddly bits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is yeah. that kind of what the term arts organizer means or, or tell uh, me more about that well it's interesting when I started calling myself that um, I saw organizing differently than I do now um, and I saw it really as somebody who makes things happen so I would so like with market day um, I actually co-founded it with two other people with Carrie Beinert who now runs the cheese shop and with Carrie Teen who is also still like organizing her own projects in Des Moines and still involved in the community. Um, and I really got involved after those two came up with the idea. Um, Carrie Beinert had been traveling around the country, like kind of as a craft wholesaler. She would buy cool wares from people and then like sell them to shops like Domestica and was just this amazing like pollinator around the country. It was so cool. She was working out of my studio. Um, and so the two Carries had this idea, why don't we start this market? And I thought it was a great idea, but somebody had to sort of like get the legwork going. Arrange the fiddly the, bits. The fiddly bits. Like get the artists there, talk artists into showing up and bringing their goods. Um, and then eventually we learn, and then get the audiences there. So run the social media, which is mostly what we relied on. Um, reach out to traditional media, which for a long time was very, very difficult. <laughs> a little hesitant, were they? <laughs> yeah, they were not interested <laughs> for a long time. Um, and then also like make sure that everything happens and then we learned like it became also a, a project of educating artists like we learned lots of people wanted to be involved but didn't know how to create ah. uh, a, a, a product or how to price it or how to talk to people who came to their booth which can be terrifying so then we started running classes um, which also was what I what I ran um, as I went along through the years I learned also that an organizer can mean more it can mean like um, networking out those skills, getting somebody else who's a natural leader in the community to bring, be bringing more people to the table. Um, and eventually I joined CCI and as, a, as the digital organizer and learned a whole new perspective on organizing and, and that it means really to, or that it can also mean to bring people together in a way to challenge power which actually I was learning in the arts field right before I came to CCI when the arts budget at the state level got cut. Um, and we organized a huge um, arts blackout. We brought together about 75 artists to come and try to, well, to protest it, which was a monumental thing for that many of us to come together um, and to try to stop it or at least bring attention to the importance of arts funding in the state. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about this digital organizer for CCI and how your arts experiences relate to that, uh, your, yeah. your, your experience as an artist, I guess. Yeah. Um, so as a digital organizer, um, it's an interesting place. I'm, I work alongside all the community organizers. It is a community organizer, but I'm somebody who's working primarily with a community that's online. Um, and I'm really trying to do a few things. Um, one, keep our members informed of what's going on in the state um, on all of our issues and keep track of all their data so the right people are hearing about the things they want to hear about. So there's some really technical aspects to that. Um, two, uh, keep our presence out there, like be flying a digital flag. So if people are frustrated about things that are happening in the state and start wandering around the web or Googling on it, they'll see our presence and see, okay, somebody's taking action on this. I want to be part of that. Um, and the third thing is probably the most important thing, um, encouraging people, creating a pathway for people who are online and taking actions online to bring that action into the real world. So hopefully people are taking actions like writing letters and making phone calls who are in our membership and in our digital space, following our Twitter accounts, our Facebook accounts, opening our emails. But what 
I really want them to do eventually is to show up with their bodies, come to a meeting, come to an action, learn more, get more involved, and hopefully then bring their own people in as well. Um, so that's like the overall view of what I do as a digital organizer. Um, it relates really well to being an artist because, um, like simply put, because of how powerful art is. Um, I've, it, it, it's just as powerful in the digital space as it is in the physical space. Um, what do you mean by that? Yeah, uh, it's, I think we all can recognize that art um, shapes and colors and symbols can sometimes say things that are really difficult to say with words, especially with written words, which is how most of the internet is absorbed for most people. Um, so when you can create an image that is arresting, um, that carries, sometimes like, sometimes I'm just creating an image that try, that I try to, um, imbue with like an element of like coolness or power or something that I want to, people to stop and want to be a part of, um, then that can really draw more, more eyes, more attention, and hopefully more feet to our movement also. Um, so I not only, I create art for us because that's just what I do. I, I can't not make, the, <laughs> make things. I love making stickers and posters and all that stuff, t-shirts, all that. But I also, as digital organizer, um, have been really interested in bringing other artists in as well. So I find other artists who are creating work that speaks to our issues. Like, um, like uh, right now there's a, the, with the invasion of the Royal Mounted Canadian police of yet another um, native homeland, we're talking about water as life again. We're talking about land and water protectors. So um, I can help spread the message about what's happening in Canada and British Columbia by sharing the art that artists are making online and help our members get interested in that, get activated by that, and hopefully get kind of like get deepened in their political analysis by that. And art is really the, it's again, it's like flying this flag, like Look at look at this cool flag. <laughs> well, I find this interesting too because when I looked at a lot of your work online, now there's yeah. probably other places to see your work, but when I was looking at it online, a lot of it has these really I have to admit very engaging visual I don't know if illustration is the right word, but yeah. that kind of thing. But then you do use a lot of words. I do. I love words. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you have some one, wonderful phrases. I don't know if they're original with you mm. or not, but I love them. Um Honor any error as a hidden intention. Oh, Brian Eno said that. Okay. I think. I think that was a Brian Eno thing. And almost everything will work again if you unplug it for a few minutes, including you. Yeah, Anne Lamott <laughs> said that. Yeah. I love quotes. Yeah. <laughs> and then this is definitely you and gets us to, I think, maybe speaking about what your future as an artist might hold. Mm. Uh, winter means a lot of quiet work. Yeah. Yeah, it does. So... Tell me a little bit about the quiet work you're doing now to the extent that you can't even talk about it. Yeah, um, man, when, I have to like say that out loud to myself because I think sometimes in the winter I get really anxious, like I'm not doing enough work. Um, and so if I can say that and own it, then I can remind myself that, no, this is what I'm supposed to be doing right now. Um, having grown up in the Midwest, I've lived in the Midwest my whole life. I love being outside. I love being active. And I have to remember like, Maybe the outside doesn't want me to be out there right now. Um, so right now I'm working on um, a few projects with other organizations in the state. I'm working on a project with um, Des Moines Democratic Socialists. I'm working on um, some... The, the project that I'm most excited about is really quiet work. I'm working on uh, narrative strategy with CCI. So looking at what we how we can use the stories we tell to build more power, basically, in the state, which is something that we haven't done as an organization all that much. We've sort of dipped our toes into it, um, but we, my colleagues, the members that I talk with, and I understand that the stories that we tell are so powerful. Um, because human brains are really wired to wired for storytelling. That was the original way we shared knowledge and information. We still share knowledge and information that way was codified into stories, into myths, into parables. And um, right, and, and if we're not playing in that arena, um, not even of myths and parables and like 
blockbuster movie making, but really in understanding the power of symbols of words, then we're, we are completely ignoring kind of an arena of power. So I'm super excited about that because it's very like, it is very quiet work. It is very um, nerdy work. Like I get to nerd out and get really like into um, a lot of research on framing and messaging and narrative and also developing the strategy for how to approach that as an organization with our members. If you were to tell the story of the Des Moines arts community, yeah, what would be the point of climax? Oh, I don't, I don't think we're there yet. Um, and I think it comes in the future. And it will be a point where our artists community come together and show our show our power i'm also really obsessed with power (laughs) (laughs) not for myself but for the communities that i roll in i guess Um, what will that look like you think showing our power um that's a great question i there iowa is a fascinating place politically um it seems really kind of quiet and um yeah, quiet, I guess. But the reality is, like, there are a lot of very powerful people who work in this state. And a lot of the power is um, is centered on big ag, industrial ag, and insurance. And those are that's power that is um, not always in alignment with the people's interests. And artists are... Artists are individually such powerful people because we wield this tool of narrative of imagery of being able to call people to a cause by putting up this flag Um, and often because we have the power of um, we can walk in this like in our own lane we don't always want to or need to adhere to other people's rules Um, we hold a lot of power and I am working for the day when artists in this community in Des Moines and in this state come back together again and wield that power for a purpose, for action on climate, for people's health, for our water, for our land, for our air. That's what I'm working for. And I see it happening. Like we had, I talked a little bit earlier about the arts blackout, but like, um, I think that's kind of a structural test of our power. But um, I don't think we've seen that climax yet. This piece is just getting started. Yeah. Yeah. I can't thank you enough. It's been an absolute delight to visit with you, Kat. Yeah, thank you. And so just a reminder to folks, uh, you can find out more about Kat Rocketship and Kat's work. Twitter, at Kat Rocketship. Instagram, umami, O-O-M-A-M-I. And you can find more about Kat at Iowa CCI and at CCI Action. And then, of course, Market Day Iowa. You got it. Thank you so much. And always reminding folks, don't forget about the first Fridays at Main Frame Art Studios, 900 Key Away in downtown Des Moines. This is 900 Views. I'm Pat Bodie. Thanks for joining us. Mm-hmm.